In this video, I would like to have a look at the third round game from the World Cup between Maxime Fachelagraaf, the Frenchman with three names, against Javukir Sindarov, upcoming man, young guy, 17 years old only from Uzbekistan, but he's already a gold medalist winner, as with his country, he managed to win the Olympiad uh, last year. And why I think this is an interesting pairing is because both players, they have a very similar playing style, they are really good calculators and I think that leads to uh, usually to uh, to sharp interesting uh, battles. Let's have a look. Their first game ended in a draw and now Fashele Graf is playing with the white pieces. Opens the game with the move 1 e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the Rue Lopez or Spanish opening, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castling kingside and I think uh, the system uh, Sindorov is uh, choosing here with the move bishop c5, the Archangelsk variation, is a very interesting uh, choice and I think it fits very well with his uh, aggressive uh, playing style. Uh, there's nothing wrong with other setups by placing the bishop on e7 instead, but obviously the bishop is more actively placed on uh, c5, but of course that also means that it's more vulnerable and White will try to attack that bishop uh, very, very soon. White plays here the move c3, and now black goes for the move uh, b5. And uh, well, you do attack the bishop, there are two options now. You can go to b3 or to c2. If you wanted to force the bishop to go to b3, you may even have considered starting with the move b5, and after bishop b3 only then play the move bishop uh, c5. There are some subtleties with, with the move order, but with the move order we uh, get in the game, Starting with bishop c5, white has this option to drop back with the bishop to c2 to overprotect the pawn on e4. And this is mainstream theory. This has been seen thousands of times before. Black has very aggressive move d5, opens up the center immediately and tries to um, grab the initiative, trying to exploit small lead in development because white is having a hard time getting uh, these pieces into play. There's an Immediate crisis in the center, uh, white can uh, capture on d5 or can even play a move like d4. These moves have been worked out for, uh, for a long uh, period of time and uh, I think in general black is doing uh, quite okay in uh, these lines. Lately it has been uh, established that the move a4 is also uh, very challenging as um, after the game's continuation d takes e4, black is taking the pawn and attacking the knight on f3, there is the move a takes b5. Exploiting the pin on the on the a file, as black is unable to recapture, the rook is unprotected. So, of course, the knight on c6 is hanging as well. And interestingly, uh, there have been a lot of games played uh, with this position uh, recently as well. And uh, one of them was the game of uh, Biera against Sindarov. Uh, in the Global Chess League in um, in Dubai. And in that game, Sindorov played here the move Bishop G4, incredibly sharp move, pinning the uh, Knight on, uh, on F3. There's a lot of theory, both moves, uh, Bishop G4 and the game's continuation, E takes F3, are very interesting. And now, rather than taking on, uh, on C6, there is this option also to play Queen takes F3. So now we have another pin on uh, on this diagonal. If the knight moves, if black tries to save the knight, the rook will be taken. And for that reason, black decides to insert the move e4, attacking the queen. White is going to take with the bishop. So there's massive pressure here. Still the pawn on uh, b5 cannot be captured either as the rook is hanging. But black has the move knight e5, moves the knight away and uh, of course the bishop can't really capture on a8 because the queen is hanging. So white got to do something with its queen and it goes back to e2. That's the uh, the key square for the queen to uh, to go to, so to, to stay in touch with the bishop. If you take on uh, e4 with the knight, it's queen takes e4 and the knight is pinned with the king on e8. So the key move here for black is castling kingside. Now you may think, what is this? totally insane line. Everything is hanging. Yes, that's true. Um, first things first, if you do take on a8, which was not played in the game, black has this uh, option to uh, 
install a knight on uh, on d3 and look at uh, at these pieces they are really having a hard time getting into play while black has simple plan of placing the rook on the e-file and with the bishop and knight and perhaps other pieces coming in as well white is uh, suffering quite a quite a lot here this is all still theory by the way but um you see that black gets ample compensation for the uh, for the exchange therefore instead of uh, taking on a8 a better move is to play the move d4 moving up the pawn attacking both these minor pieces and rather than trying to solve one of these problems black instead plays here the move bishop g4 and that's a very nice move attacking the queen and if white would play here f3 uh, to uh, attack four pieces everything is hanging white is a piece down he will regain the material but the key move here is bishop takes d4 check c takes d4 queen takes d4 and white would love to solve the check and capture some of the material but after bishop bishop to e3 try to attack the queen it's queen takes e4 devilish trap as after f takes e4 the queen on e2 will be taken so that means bishop e3 is not good there are other options as well but if you go for instance for the exchange of queens black can uh, just take on uh, e4 and okay after taking one of these pieces material will be uh, even again anyway this was not played after bishop um, to g4 why decided to move the queen knight takes e4 queen takes e4 and here also very interesting uh, moment uh, still a lot of pieces are hanging in a number of games knight f3 has been uh, played here voluntarily giving up this uh, that piece the idea is that after g takes f3 you can move the bishop attacking the rook if white moves the rook you can move the bishop as well and uh, black's king sorry white's king is uh, wide open so the critical line here and this has been seen millions of times d takes e5 bishop takes f1 king takes queen d1 check and now queen e1 queen takes f3 white has two minor pieces but its king is open black has ideas to go for an attack if white knows its theory maybe it's slightly better but it's very complicated and most games in this line ended in a draw interesting moment as uh, Sinderov comes up with a small surprise as instead of knight f3 he played here to move bishop d7 bishop goes back and now a lot of things are hanging you can take on uh, e5 but after a takes b5 pieces can get uh, swapped on the a file but that extra pawn is not really worth something uh, in my opinion uh, these bishops are quite nice and offer sufficient uh, compensation if you take on c5 maybe rook e8 is an interesting move uh, to protect the knight and also bishop takes b5 is there looks as if black has having quite some uh, nice play in the game there followed b takes a6 and i think mvl knew what he was uh, was doing he's taking the pawn understanding that both the uh, minor pieces are still hanging and black once again ignores it by playing the move bishop to b5 hitting the rook and here white uh, decides to take on uh, on e5 and after bishop takes f1 king takes f1 the bishop goes to a7 the reason it goes to a7 is that you probably got to guard this uh, pawn on uh, on a6 so it's time to have a look at this position more closely and we see that white is having three pawns for the exchange so materially speaking this looks better for uh, for black but the problem is the um, the coordination and uh, it still takes a couple of moves before these pieces are going to to join play and uh, also black will get a tempo uh, very soon with a move like rook e8 the, the queen will be forced to go away this was still seen in one correspondence game in which the move queen f5 was played and i think that's a very clever move um to anticipate the um, potential threat of rook e8 but in the game mvl played the move knight d2 he brings the knight into play but now it will take more time for the bishop to get released so why not play here the move bishop e3 instead well in that case there is a move like c5 uh, black will try to get rid of its pawn uh, and d takes c5 is not possible because of checkmate on d1 that's a recurring theme in uh, in these positions so knight d2 played 
but the move c5 on the board anyway, putting a lot of pressure. And you can see that um, the queen is hoping to enter on d3 if possible. Maybe rook e8 is there. So white still needs a couple of moves to consolidate. If you try to keep the d file closed with d5, rook e8 will be played. And after queen h5, for instance, there's queen e7. It's very difficult to cover the e1 square. If the queen would go back to stop the mating threat, then this bishop look, is looking pretty bad. But after c4, the bishop comes alive. This is a beautiful pawn sacrifice. In fact, it's not really even a pawn sacrifice because after knight takes c4, it's bishop takes f2, opening up the position. King takes f2, queen h4 check. Next move, you take on c4. White's king is open, pawns are weak, black is much better. Therefore, d5 is not really good at, uh, at this point. Knight f3 was played in the game, and white is basically one move away from getting his bishop out. But first, it's black's turn. And I think something like rook e8 would have been very clever to attack the queen. If the queen goes to f5 now, you take on d4, c takes d4, bishop takes d4, and black is uh, fighting here. It's an unclear position, in my opinion. But there follow the move c takes d4 right away, c takes d4, and only now rook to uh, e8. Very similar to uh, what we have seen, but the big difference is that the queen has now even more options to, to, to choose from. Because the pawn is not on c5, a much better move compared to what play, was played in the game is the move queen, queen a5, offering the exchange of queens. And that's what white really wants, because we will see later in the game that the king is the main problem. If queens will be swapped, you have three pawns for the exchange. Maybe black is able to regain some of the pawns, but you're not risking anything. You have definitely uh, a good position as, as white. Uh, at least you are good enough not to, to lose it. Queen f5 was played and now bishop takes d4 played anyway. So black has regained one pawn with the point being that you cannot really take on d4. After queen takes d4, you're threatening mate. If you play bishop e3 to attack the queen and cover the back rank, the simplest move is queen c4 check. And after the king goes away, you will take the pawn with your rook as queen protects it as well. So that is just looking great for black. But now we get to see what happened in the game. After queen f5, bishop takes d4. That queen on f5 is there with a reason because MVL, as I said, he's a big calculator. He doesn't want to defend. He's looking for a counterattack and played here the move knight to g5, attacking both the pawn on f7 and h7. And the question is if that is a serious threat. Well, Sindarov, very cool um, as he is, played here the move h6, just questioning the, the knight. What, what is the knight gonna, gonna do there? Well, if you take with the queen with check on f7, king h8, there are no serious threat. The knight is hanging, the, the knight will have to move uh, again. Now the bishop can go away, threatening checkmate on d1. Maybe the bishop gets out to cover the d1 square. Now the queen goes to b6, setting up a big mating threat against the pawn on f2. So bishop goes back to g3. Now you take the pawn on b2, and uh, in order to stay in the game, not to collapse, queen a2 should be played. White is in control. If queens will be swapped, probably black will wrap up the pawn on a6 at some point. But the remaining position, despite being, being an exchange down, should be very drawish with pawns only on one side of the board. That is one option. In the game, queen h7 was played. King f8. And now, if you give a check... I will go king e7, and now both the queen and the knight are hanging. So that's not good news for uh, for white. Knight f3 was played. The knight comes back into defense. But now it's queen to b6. Very nice move. The queen is actively placed here. It keeps the bishop uh, defended. But also, black is intending to take the pawn on a6. And I think this is the critical moment of the game. What should Y do? Once again, giving a check is not really uh, sensible because the king goes to e7 and you can't take the pawn on g7 because the bishop keeps it defended. So White really wanted to get rid of the bishop, decided to take here on d4. Believing that after queen takes d4, bishop e3, White is okay. You're an exchange down, but you're solid. 
However, this is not checkers. And rather than taking on d4, there is also the intermediate move. Rook takes a6, guys. Let's have a look. Instead of capturing the piece, you capture this very annoying pawn on a6. With the point that after rook takes, it's queen takes a6 with check. If the king goes away to g1, it's rook e1 with checkmate. This is a big problem. And I don't know what else you do. If you avoid the exchange of rooks, then I'm going to take on d4 anyway. And that, that's a huge difference because the pawn on a6 is no longer there. Black is winning here. Now, some lines I want to, to show you. Queen h8 check, for instance, king e7. Now, if you would play knight f5, I'm just going away with my king to d7. The queen is hanging. The rook on a1 is hanging. Queen b5 is a threat. And after the king goes to g1, it's going to be checkmate. Everything is hanging. This is lost. The attempt to play first bishop g5 to get your rook involved. Now, you can do, uh, you, I mean, you can capture this bishop. But for instance, you can also play king d7 here again. And as I said, everything is still hanging, like in the other line. So black is in excellent shape. For that reason, the move g3 was played. This is a very tricky move to avoid all these back rank problem, problems. The king can always come to g2 if needed. Now, if you do take the rook, was not played in the game, but you understand why. White has this option to play knight f5. Threatening checkmate either on g7 or h8. If you take on c1, it's king to g2, and after queen b7, king h3, all the checks are over. You're two rooks down. Okay, why there's a knight for it, but it's it's mate. I mean, the only thing you can do is f6, queen h8, check, king f7, queen takes g7, and on the next move, you capture the queen. That's going to be game over. The queen is superior to the rooks in this, uh, in this end game. Okay, I should tell the honest uh, story. After knight f5, Black can still give a check first, rather than capturing the bishop on c1. After king g2, you give another check. King to h3, it's still mating threat. You can give up the queen, and after queen takes f5, queen takes f5, rook takes c1. Now the end game should be pretty drawish. This pawn is not uh, dangerous and can easily be stopped by the two rooks. But Sindarov, is he going for this line or not? Well, he played here, fantastic move, queen to b7. The rook cannot be taken because of queen h1 with checkmate. The king can't go anywhere. Therefore, you got to find an alternative. But if the king goes to g1, it's rook e1 with checkmate. If, if you play anything else, the rook will be hanging on a1. So queen h8 check, only move. King to e7. Now the king is obstructing the rook. But your queen is hanging as well. Queen takes g7. You don't want to lose the queen. Now his rook takes a1. Look at this. Black is two exchanges up. Okay, black's king is wide open. Knight f5 check. Looks dangerous. White has a number of checks uh, coming up. If you would go to d8, try to run away. Maybe queen f6 is, uh, is a little bit annoying and there's no convenient way to stop uh, the check uh, for, for black. So instead of going to d8, Sindorov played a much better move. He went for king e6, just moving up the king. Attacking the knight and uh, everything is hanging. The bishop is hanging, knight is hanging. If you take the pawn on h6, you take on f5 and you just run out of the checks via the light squares. I mean, this bishop is pinned, can never join the attack. And uh, very soon the rook will be protected as well. This is game over. Black is winning. Instead of taking the pawn on h6 with check, knight d4 was played. It's another check, but now the simplest move, king d5, just... King is safe in the middle of the board. White is helpless. Everything is protected. Bishop is hanging. If uh, you do something about the bishop, probably uh, the knight will be hanging at some point as well. So knight f3 was played. Now rook takes c1 check. King g2. And black is two rooks up. You just protect everything. Ensure there are no tricks. No chance for white to regain a rook at some point. After queen takes h6, rook e6 played. Things have gone horribly wrong for white. And MVL is out of the tournament. White resigned. A big upset in the World Cup. Something I would not have predicted at all. But Sindarov is an absolute machine. In the previous World Cup in 2021, he managed to eliminate another top player 
uh, now representing France, um, Alireza Firusha. So that uh, that really shows his skills. He's a very strong, gifted tactician and maybe a dark horse for more uh, big successes in, in this event. I hope you enjoyed this video. Learn a thing or two. Don't forget to subscribe and soon much more coverage of this exciting event.